Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Eden Presbyterian Church, and we welcome those who are watching via live stream this morning on November 14th, 2021. Can you believe it? <clears throat> A month and what, two weeks, and the year will be over. <laughs> Not that we're counting, right? All right, so announcements this morning, uh, I do have a Presbyterian clergy cluster in Garden Center tomorrow, so I'll be gone most of tomorrow. Um, on Thursday, I have a ministerial meeting with the Osage ministers at 9 o'clock at Sacred Heart. <clears throat> I don't know if that one's actually taking place, the conference board meeting. We did have a meeting yesterday from noon to 4.30, and no one confirmed or denied if that one was happening this weekend. So I'm either in meetings all day Saturday or I'm not. And then next Sunday after worship, uh, we're going to bring in the Christmas tree and the ornaments because the following Sunday, which is after Thanksgiving, we're going to kind of have a celebratory hanging of the greens and talk about um, why we have evergreens and why we have wreaths and why we have candles. Um, but I do want to say altar uh, committee, this looks amazing. Thank you. It's great, doesn't it? Because next week, we're going to celebrate a Thanksgiving. We're going to celebrate Thanksgiving next week, so this is going to be perfect to keep us in that spirit of thankfulness. Um, and also, I forgot to mention this at Osage, but if you have not gone to see Mamma Mia, there is a performance at 2 o'clock today. I encourage you to go. I went Friday night, and it was great. The kids did wonderful, and the musicians did great, so um, if you have the time to go to this afternoon, uh, please go and support those kids because they did really good. Other announcements? Hearing none, then let us turn our attention to why we're here to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And for all who are here, will you please stand and join me in our call to worship. Let our hearts exalt in the Lord. Our strength is exalted in God. Let our mouths be ever fixed in praise. God has given us the victory. There is no holy one like the Lord. There is no rock like our God. For God does not give us up to death, but shows us the path of life. Praise the Lord. Amen. And let us praise the Lord by singing our opening hymn, number 52, I Sing the Mighty Power of God.
against our neighbors and family and friends. And so together we pray. Oh God, who is faithful and just, we have failed to help those who have little while we have much. We are boastful and haughty and fail to appreciate the gifts. Do we have a different one? Okay, let's start over and I'll read it off the screen. Oh God, who is faithful and just, we have failed to help those who have little while we have much. Forgive us, Lord, for we are quick to forget that all of life is in your hands. Renew our hope, increase our courage, and keep us watchful for the signs of your just and peaceful reign that is to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ, who gave himself once and for all, forgives and saves. Therefore, be reconciled to one another. Be holding fast to the confession of our hope through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who forgives us always. Amen. Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. 
Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. So when he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? And then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he. And they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place. But the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and there will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pains. For this is the word of the Lord. And let us pray. Holy and gracious Spirit, thank you for being among us this morning, finding your way into this worship space with our songs, with our laughter, with our words, and our prayers. We ask for you now to enter our hearts and our minds, open our ears to hear the message you have for us this day. And Lord, I ask, may the words of my mouth and the meditations upon all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh God. Amen. My sinuses are acting up, so you have to excuse me here for a minute. Um, so I'm looking around at the world today and I'm noticing all these empty buildings and houses and garages and gas stations and malls. And I think to myself, why do we have to let these things go? Why does progress have to be progress? When maybe a successful building or a business was there at one point in time. And if you go into Osage on the east side of town, you know that mall is sitting empty except for the uh, tire station that's over there, the car station that works on cars. And so I wonder, is this kind of some of Jesus' prophecy? that eventually the buildings that we have and we own are going to crumble. And then I wonder, and I think, Jesus says, don't store your things up in storehouses. And that really speaks to me because when I was a child, and even as an adult, I like things. I like to have things around me. And I saved every piece of art and paper that I did in kindergarten all the way through whatever it was, probably sixth, seventh grade. And then one night, I'm laying in bed, and all of a sudden, all of us in the house heard, <laughs> and I'm like, what was that? And mom and dad come running up the stairs, and they're like, what happened? They thought one of us fell out of bed. There were, there's three of us. We're all upstairs. I said, no, I think we're all okay. They opened, and it was like next to my head. They opened my closet door, and all of a sudden they saw my ceiling in the closet had fallen to the ground. Now, our farmhouse was an old farmhouse, as you can imagine. No air conditioning. Wind could get through every crick and cranny of the windows. And with the adjustment and time that it had sat in that spot, the ceiling of my closet had fallen. It was a plaster ceiling with that old silvery insulation. And as I look back on it, thank God it happened because I would probably still have all of my papers from kindergarten, first, second, third grade. Because <laughs> they're sentimental, it meant something. And then I think, God says, don't keep that stuff. That stuff really does not mean anything, Dixie. And I think, well, but God is so nice to have that stuff. It makes me feel good. And yet, what do we do with it? It sits in a corner, it sits in a box, and it's just there. 
scripture tells us God will take care of us. God is there every moment. And that's where this scripture of Mark comes into play for us today. Because it really reminds me, and maybe you as well, how much stuff we have. And at one point in our life, it's going to be gone. And then what are we going to have? What are we going to do? It's going to probably force us to really know what it means to live by faith. To really be happy with who we are and how we live in our day-to-day -day life. So Jesus takes this combination of the destruction of the temple with false prophets because we know there are false prophets out there. We've probably heard some of them at some point in our life. We've probably met some of them in our life. And some have come and gone. Some are still with us today. And then I think about the advertisements. I'm not saying they're false, but they're really good at selling their product. And whatever it is they're selling, we're captured. And that's probably the best description I have as a false prophet is where we're captured so much by what they're trying to sell. We want to follow it. And then one day, a few years ago, I was driving along a road in Missouri and I saw a billboard. Now don't hurt me on this one, but there was a billboard out there that had one of our presidents on it and it says, Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. I think if Jesus would say that and see that, and he'd be like, what? That doesn't, that's not how scripture is to be used. Who is putting that on a billboard for us to think about our governmental people in the White House as the son given to us? Jesus would be angry, just like he was with the Romans back when he was around. He was angry with what was going on. And that's where we have to believe and understand where our faith is. Is it with something like that in bright lights on a billboard? Or is it the humbleness that we have right here, right now, today? Because Jesus knows that when we buy into something like that, that our world is desperate. And we are desperate. We want something right now to save us from all of everything that's happening, from the destruction, from the pain, from the virus, from the gas prices, from whatever. We want somebody right now to save us. And if you think about the disciples, they have the same exact um, feeling and want. They wanted this knight in shining armor to come on a white horse and save them from the Roman government. And who did they get? Jesus on a donkey. Complete opposite of what they were thinking. And that's why Jesus tells them, whatever you see in awe is not all it. Because when the disciples were in awe of that temple, he wanted them to be sure that they understood that it was not going to be left like that. That temple that Herod the Great built 15 years before Jesus was born, it stood for over 500 years from the day of Ezra. It was a beautiful temple. It was an eye catcher but it wasn't built in honor of God. Herod built it to appease the Jews. And in 70 AD, the Romans came and destroyed that temple and destroyed that city of Jerusalem. There was only two or three disciples left alive at that point. They saw that temple be destroyed and they realized Jesus prophesied that. He is real, he is right, and we need to tell people. That's
that's where we get here today. That's where we have that faith and that energy of joy, where we can continue to spread the message without the walls. I'm not saying one day soon that this building is going to crumble, but someday it will. Maybe not in our lifetime, which I hope it's not in my lifetime. But that's why Jesus gave us this message to say, you don't need the walls. I preached on lakes and I preached on hillsides. You just go and spread that message of love to everyone. Learn to live today. Not yesterday, not tomorrow. Focus on what you have today because he made these predictions so that we can be spiritually alive and alert. He wants us to live and preach that gospel message. He doesn't want us to be afraid or give in to those false prophets that are among us. He only warns us time and time again to be ready. And he warns us to not follow those who say they are Christ. We know that truth. We understand that truth. And we know that that one day when Jesus comes, we should be able to recognize him. I believe that. He may not come in the form that we have envisioned, he may not come again as a child. Who knows what he'll come like, but he will come and we will know him. And it will be beyond a doubt for all the believers. So remain bold in the commitment of following, having our hearts and life ready in Christ. Because no one knows when it will happen. Stay ready. Stay alert. Because when the walls do come down, when the wars do break out even worse than they are today, we will be ready to preach the gospel truth and proclaim that good news of Jesus Christ. And we'll know when that day is here, when there are no more tears, and when there is no death that holds power over us and we'll know when the grief is swallowed up in laughter because Jesus will be in our sights. He is here among us and we give thanks to our Lord and Savior and his Father God. Amen. And so we sing our hymn of response, Shall We Gather at the River, number 680.
So as you leave today, or if you did before you come, we thank you for leaving your offering in our offering trays by the doors. And for those of you watching live stream, we continue to encourage you to send your gifts of tithes and offerings into a Church of Eden Presbyterian. We give you thanks. Amen.
Lord, we also pray for our current military men and women who are serving this country. And we pray for your guidance and safety to be upon them and be with their families. And Lord, we pray that you be with our world leaders and our national leaders and our state and local leaders. And we pray, Lord, that we just hear you, that we hear you calling us. And Lord, we pray for our loved ones in all of the nursing homes and rehab centers and those that are living independently but aren't able to get out of their homes. We pray, Lord, for your love and joy to be within those walls. But most of all, Lord, we celebrate. We celebrate with you the birthdays and anniversaries that are today and of this week. We celebrate being here among our loved ones. And we celebrate your son, Jesus Christ, who gives us all of these lessons to learn and to absorb. And we come to you with the prayer that he taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us stand and join in our closing hymn, number 309, Sing Them Over Again to Me.